Hey, what's up everyone? It's Franchise923 and I just got this Dell PowerEdge R720. Um, so yesterday I actually bought 128 gigs of RAM uh, and installed it into my old Dell R710. Um, but the person I bought it from was actually also selling an R720. Uh, and after a night or two of thinking about it, I finally decided to pull the trigger and upgrade to the R720. So going to uh, pull out all that 128 gigs worth of RAM that uh, I put into the R710 and put it back into this R720. Um, so this actually came with 64 gigs. So total, it's going to have 192 gigs worth of RAM. It's going to be a beast. I can't wait to get this thing up and running. Um, I got this new terabyte or two terabyte, actually two terabyte Samsung Evo uh, 870. Uh, it was a pretty good price. I got it at Micro Center today. Uh, I was surprised how cheap uh, SSDs are now. Um, so yeah, this is going to be where I install all my VMs on and I have this uh, 32 gigabyte just USB stick. This is where uh, VMware ESXi is going to go. Um, so that's I'm just going to install the uh, operating system on here. And that's it. Uh, super excited to get this thing up and running. It's going to be a huge performance um, increase from my old server. Um, this thing is much lighter also than the R710. It's probably like 10 or 15 pounds lighter, uh, more power efficient apparently, uh, quieter, which is also going to be nice. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to make a video of how I, how I get it set up. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually crack open the R710 and the R720, um, pull out all the RAM in the R710 now and put it in here, and then replace, um, put back all that old RAM that I took out of the R710 put it back in. So there's like 16 four gigabyte sticks that I'm gonna put back in. And yeah, we'll just take it from there. So yeah, here they are. The new Dell PowerEdge R720 is on the right and the old Dell PowerEdge R710 is on the left. So here's a closer view of the R710 and here's a closer view of the R720. All right, so we got the R710 on the left here and just to open it, we're just gonna open this little uh, thing here and it slides off nice and easily. And then for the R710, it's slightly a different location, just up top here, but you just open it up and take it off. All right, so in the R20 right here, there are four 16 gigabyte sticks. And in the R710, we have um, eight 16 gigabyte sticks. But yeah, what we're gonna do is take this RAM out, all this RAM out of here, put it back into the R720. And we're going to be adding these old um, four gigabyte sticks. There's, there's actually 16 of them. We're going to be adding those back to the R710. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, swap that RAM out. So I'm actually going to open up the case and install this USB stick uh, into the USB port. So there are external ports here somewhere, but there's also one inside and that's where I'm going to put this one because, you know, we're not going to be pulling this out. It's just going to be in here. So you should be able to see the USB port there, right there. So that's where we're going to stick this USB stick. And I'm just going to plug that in. All right, so now when we boot the computer on, we just need to make sure we um, install into that. All right, so this USB stick actually has the installer on it. So I'm gonna plug this one out here on the external one. So we're gonna make sure we boot from this and then the target device we wanna install on is that, uh, that SS, or not SS, that USB stick we put inside here. All right. Um, now I want to get the, the Samsung drive out, out and ready. I'm going to open that up. All 
We don't need to read the instructions. All right, this thing is pretty slick. 870. Uh, so we actually, now we need to install, uh, we just need to screw this into like a drive caddy. So here's the drive caddy. So it basically works by pressing this thing open. And now we just need to basically screw it in here. Now I always am not sure which screw it goes in. Like, does it go in the top one or bottom one? Uh, let's try the top one first. All right, so I just have these four screws here and I'm just gonna carefully screw it in into here. Um, yeah, my, this is just gonna be trial and error. I'm not sure if, if it needs to go this way or this way. Um, Let's try, I'm gonna try that way. So, let's just line it up and get one in here. This thing's like a magnetic, so it's sticking to it. Oh, that's annoying. Oh no. I like to just give it a nice firm push once I can tell that it's in. It feels pretty good. All right, I think that's it. All right, so I pulled up my router homepage. So when I turn this on, I know what IP address I'm going to have to go to because uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be. So I actually hear the server running, but I haven't pressed the power button. So I think there must just be some fan on, but I'm actually going to press the power button now. All right, here goes nothing. Not too loud. So I'm just gonna refresh it to see if I see anything different here. All right, here we go. So now we see two items here. Two items here, I'm going to just go to this uh, this IP address in the browser and see what I see, see what it looks like. Now it might still be booting up actually, so it might not work yet. Oh, there we go. I think if you actually type this is unsafe here, It'll let you go through. That's kind of a weird uh, trick with Chrome. So let me try logging in with root Calvin. All right, username and password is not right. Let's type it again. Hmm. Hey guys, so I got the password from the original owner. Um, so I'm, I'm in iDRAC now. Um, and I can see here it's it's recognizing all 192 gigabytes of the memory. Um, so you can see it's recognized all 12, so that's good. Um, the only issue is this iDRAC 7 is a little different than iDRAC 6, where um, in order to see the virtual console, you need a special license, um, an iDRAC Enterprise license, and I don't have iDRAC Enterprise. So the problem is, I'm gonna to have to actually plug in a monitor in order to uh, boot into this and see the BIOS. Uh, not a big deal, but uh, I'm just gonna to have to do it that way instead. So I'm also going to upgrade or update the firmware and BIOS version. Now, I'm not sure, this already might be up to date. I'm not sure what the latest version is, but I'm just gonna download this thing and boot into it. And this should get me 
uh, everything updated correctly. So I'm just gonna get this and then burn it to a um, USB stick. All right, so here I am just booting it up for the first time and I hit F11, I think, to get into the BIOS boot manager. And if you look at the top right hand corner, you see it says entering BIOS boot manager. Um, and I'm really just trying to get into the BIOS so I can boot from the USB stick, uh, which right now has the, um, the Dell firmware updates on it. So that's what we're trying to do here. That's the goal. Um, so this is sort of just like normal boot up stuff that the server does. And I actually sped this up a little bit. So normally this will take a little bit longer than what you're seeing in the video here. But um, yeah, eventually you'll get to a point where um, you can get into the BIOS boot manager. And there we go. We have a little menu here and we're just going to go into the BIOS boot menu and click on uh, what was it again? So the front USB stick. So that's where I put that USB stick. So we're just going to cl click on that. And once we click that, it's going to launch uh, a script, I think. Like it's not even an, an installer. It just automatically runs this updater without you even saying yes or hitting anything. It just, it just automatically starts running it. So uh, that's what happens. And you'll see that's what it looks like when it uh, uh, initially starts up. And you can see it, it starts installing stuff. All right, so the firmware updates finished successfully. And now I'm actually installing the hypervisor. So uh, in a similar fashion to how I burned the uh, update ISO to a USB stick, I just burned the hypervisor ISO to a USB stick. And I actually decided not to install ESXi. And instead, I'm installing Proxmox. Um, so... In the video, I actually I didn't um, I actually didn't film some steps that I took. So I also have a five terabyte hard drive that I use for like NAS storage. Um, so I also put that inside the server too. So I have two hard drives in there: the big um, the two terabyte SSD, which is for virtual machines, and then the five terabytes just storage for like movies and music and stuff like that. Um, I was having a problem with ESXi. Um, I wasn't able to pass the five terabyte disc to a VM in ESXi. So I don't know how I did it with the Dell R710, but I did do it with the ESX, ESXi. Um, so I'm just reverting back to Proxmox and that's what you see here on the screen. Um, just booting into Proxmox. And here's the actual installer. All right, so that's, I don't want normal. I don't want the DVD drive. Don't know, it looks like a uh, NIC, so a network card. And here we go, hard drive, USB, not the internal, I want the front USB. And this should launch Proxmox, the installer for it. All right, and there we are. We have Proxmox up and running <clears throat> on this port, 8006. And now I'm going to begin to rebuild my VMs. All right, so a few days later, I have most of my VMs back up and running. Um, so this is my NAS Open Media Vault. I use this to, uh, you know, to share out most of my media, like movies and DVDs. And this is what I was talking about, um, passing a disk to directly. I wasn't able to do that with ESXi. Um, I didn't spend a ton of time trying to figure out how to do it because I originally did it in R on the R710, but for whatever reason, it wasn't easily working. Um, so I just decided to go back to Proxmox. And you can see here, when you click on the VM and go to hardware, um, you can actually see that there's two hard, hard drives attached to it. So this is um, the normal hard drive. When you first um, initialize the VM, you give it hard drive space. And then there's the second hard drive. And this is actually the um, five terabyte drive. And if you look at um, the disks that you have, um, 
in Proxmox, you can see here, this is the 4.55. It's actually technically, I guess, 4.55, but it's a five terabyte drive. Um, and yeah, in Proxmox, it's real easy just to say, I want this drive to just go directly to a VM. And I, I think that's useful for, for my purposes, it was. Um, I have a few other VMs up and running, just some Windows servers, Plex, uh, OpenVPN, and some others. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. That's all I really wanted to share. So I have officially upgraded from the R710 to the R720. Um, hope the video was helpful. I know I, I kind of skipped over a few things. Like I, I didn't show you the step where I actually put the five terabyte drive in the um, in the server, but it's, it's simple. You just literally just plug it right in, just like how I did with the two terabyte uh, solid state drive. And then um, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, hopefully it was helpful. Um, if you like this kind of content, give me a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or any uh, comments, just let me know. Um, I like doing this kind of stuff. So uh, I like talking about it too. So yeah, just let me know and uh, talk to you later.